Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm not quite sure how many we've got in the room at the moment. Perhaps if we um, just take a little time and let some of the, the late arrivers um, join us. Um, but before we do that, for those of you that are already in the room, perhaps if you could uh, introduce yourselves and uh, give us an idea from, from which part of the world you're, you're actually joining. That would be great to see, to get an idea of... Um, some of the, the international scope to today's audience. That'd be lovely to see. I can see a couple of uh, friendly names and faces uh, already in the screen, so that's fantastic. Apologies for that. <clears throat> yeah, I can't actually see the, the chat window. So hi, so are you able to see the chat there? Can you shout out any of the uh, uh, wonderful locations our, our friends and guests are arriving from? Yes, yes, yes. People are now chatting. Sunny Dubai, The Hague, Amsterdam. Nice to see so many people joining from all around the globe. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, my name's uh, Peter McDonald. I'm joined today by my uh, colleague and friend, uh, Gijs. Um, and welcome. Welcome to the Edgemundo Business Simulation Workshop. We hope we're set for a really exciting, fun-packed uh, and um, educational uh, session where we're going to do a couple of things for you. We're going to give you uh, a brief overview of how our management simulations uh, work and the types of outcomes and levels of engagement that we see. Um, and then we're also, with Heiss, we're going to then talk you through the actual uh, bread and butter of today's workshop, which is to have a couple of quick fire rounds. Bear in mind, these simulations normally take eight, 10, maybe more hours to, to really get into. So we're going to try and force you through this in, a, in, a, in an hour or two. So we'll have two quick fire rounds followed by a Q&A session after each round. Um, and really, once you're in your breakout groups, you'll be there with a, a moderator and a team leader from one of the Edgemundo team. We're out in force today. So please feel free, do engage, please share your screen. Um, it's a, it's a team-based activity. So the more engagement and the more interaction we have in those workshops, the better and the richer the experience for you. And feel free to to answer questions, uh, test us, uh, put us your challenge, put us your put your challenges towards us. We'll be more than happy to help. And if we can't deal with it, perhaps in that individual group, bring it back into the main session. Uh, well, we'll be more than happy to have a, a conversation with you around that. Um, so we're going to be on a quite a tight schedule. So I don't want to go uh, too much further into running order than that. But I'd like just to kick off by running through Edumundo, giving you a bit of background as to who we are, how we work, and specifically what these simulations are designed to do and the types of results we see. So uh, a bit of background info for those of you that don't know. We're actually a, a Dutch company headquartered in The Hague. I, myself, and a number of my colleagues who are here in the UK. Um, and we've been doing this since 2001. And personally, I think this is really noteworthy. Um, because in this day and age, there are so many technological developments happening at such a pace in the ed tech uh, industry that you're surely bombarded daily, if not hourly, with wonderful, fantastic opportunities. It's really important to know, and we want to reassure you, we've been here for a while, we'll be around for quite some time, um, and we're very experienced in this space. We're working with over 100,000 students per year, and many of our uh, higher education institutional partnerships have been in place for a decade and longer. Um, our partnerships are, are far and wide from, from Shanghai, Vietnam, over to Hawaii, from Pretoria, all the way up to Edinburgh. So we have a, a truly global footprint and we hope to uh, continue working with many of you in the chat and uh, hopefully work with some new ones as well. You may not know, uh, and we're happy to um, provide more information, have a deeper conversation on some of these points at a later stage. But we've actually got, as an organization, four main channels, four ways within which we can support you as you strive for deeper student engagement. First of all, we have our management simulations, and that's the purpose of today's workshop. We've also got a product line, which is called EduBooks, which is essentially, it's an online and interactive learning platform. It's taken those wonderfully heavy uh, textbooks that I'm sure many of us carried around with us in our rucksacks through our university days and uh, transferred them into a more contemporary and more digestible format. Uh, my personal favourite is our Brightbirds 
uh, product line, which is um, an engagement platform. Uh, and in essence, we can gamify pretty much any project that you may have, whether that's curricular based or extracurricular. We have ready to go modules such as digital skills gaps, uh, feedback literacy, onboarding, scavenger hunts. And the idea there is uh, pretty straightforward through a system of challenges and rewards and badges, students are taken on a gradual rewarded journey to that end goal you set out. Um, and the final product line is called EdStacks. And that's uh, a series of, of micro learnings. It's this sort of just in time, I don't need to know until I need to know principle. Um, really focusing, really diving deeper into some of the more essential um, skills areas that, that um, educators and students are striving for. So, what is the the, the value, and and, and um, you know why why do we see so much uh, appetite for our management simulations? Um, there are a number of of clear factors, uh, not least of all the fact that it is. It's group based, it's learning by doing. So this idea of, for example, in the lecture theater where everybody learns at the same pace in the same way um, has its endearing value, but this idea of allowing students to be a little more free um, and to learn at their own pace and in their own way um, has real value and it really enhances that learning experience. And alongside that, I think what we also see is that it, it meets those student expectations where they see expect now to see a strong digital element to the learning uh, proposition put to them by your institutions. Um, and we will discuss and demonstrate today, but there's a lot of research out of there. And we've got a lot of case studies um, that show the, the demonstrable impact there on uh, attention, progression, um, as well as graduate outcomes. And that's that's really why we're in this um, in this game. Um, we really want to provide that opportunity for your students to, to marry that theory with real world challenges. It really gives them the uh, opportunity to see and understand interdependence, interdependence between themselves and their classmates because they're put into um, management teams, interdependence between the different, perhaps the different modules on programs so they can see how strategy, finance, marketing, human resources, how it all hangs together. Um, and then that's carried over, of course, then into a, a real world understanding of how organizations actually operate. Um, and that cascades down into enhanced skills, competencies, uh, and a more collaborative and, and active learning approach. Some more basic and fundamental attributes then about um, our simulations themselves. Firstly, they're web-based. Um, they'll work on any device. Given the, the depth of some of the information, I think it's preferable if they're accessed via a laptop or a PC, um, but there's no need for any downloads, plugins, very light touch with, require, with regards to your IT team's requirements. And as I mentioned, students are put into senior management roles in organizations operating in a really wide variety of markets and economic circumstances. And the structure of the simulations is that they are conducted over a series of rounds with each round equating to one year's of, uh, worth of operations. So in the same way that you might submit your tax papers and tax forms at the end of the year, students need to set their strategy, test their tactics, and at the end of each round are rewarded or not, and then need to retest all the hypothesis, all the learning, all the actions that they've, they've put into those strategies. And critically, there is a, a dynamic algorithm at the back end, and this is what powers and drives the engagement because it's competitive. They're not playing against the formula, they're not playing against the process. They can't get to the right answer, by process of elimination. Um, so it's it's absolutely a scenario where they are competing in a very fluid market directly against their fellow students. Um, and, and given the way that it's structured, it's end-to-end -end encrypted, absolutely unique data sets, data sets, a very fluid environment, it is AI proof. Um, and we are uh, working with a growing number of institutions very much because of this point which it, it really forces students into an environment where they really do have to think for themselves 
and demonstrate and evidence that thinking. And last but not least, all of our simulations have a level of customization and flexibility available, which means that we can create an absolutely unique experience for you and for your students. And so on that point, in terms of how do we set our partnerships up and how do we support you? First and foremost, we will customize that simulation. We'll take your uh, learning objectives, we'll look at your schedule, we'll look at the, the purpose and the, the mission um, and the, the overall objectives for the module, and we will align and time, time the simulations activities to coincide with that. We come on campus, we'll do the introduction for you, we'll explain to your students how they need to approach the simulation, um, and then we come back a week or two later because they'll have used it and for sure they'll have questions. So we run a, a Q&A session just to take all of that extra heavy lifting off you. So if you want to learn all about the simulation, we'd be very happy to, to support you on that. But really, we're there to free you up to be the guide, the mentor, the coach that your students are really looking for you to be. We will provide ongoing reports and analysis so that you and the students are aware of how well they're doing. There's a 24-7-365 help desk available. Uh, and last again, <clears throat> excuse me, we issue all the students with micro-credentials that they can post onto their LinkedIn profile. And it really sets out those additional skills and experiences they've gathered through this process. And it's fantastic messaging for potential employers. Um, a lot of the conversation I expect we, we will have, and we certainly have with our partners, is around assignment. And how do we build simulations into modular uh, assessments? Sorry, not assignments. Um, and we're happy to discuss this and go into more specific requirements with each of you if required. But typically, we'll see at the end of the simulation, um, students being asked to provide individual reports where they're analyzing their outcomes and proposed strategies. It can be a group presentation um, where they're uh, set, uh, you know, uh, the agenda of justifying their approaches. Quite often as well, we see reflection journals. So they're talking in a much more personal manner on that overall journey, um, as well as you know, debrief sessions, which are designed to help students really consolidate the learning that's come out of this experience. And in, in terms of you know, categories and types of skills, competencies and attributes that have been built up, we absolutely see an impact in terms of cognitive skills because there's internal and external analysis that has to be conducted. So they have to apply critical thinking and some advanced analytical skills. They're in management teams. So they need to think about responsibilities. They need to think about delivery timelines. They need to really manage themselves. Group work for me, again, maybe it's personal bias, but the group work for me is, is really one of the major takeaways because this will be the first time that perhaps they've really had to think about developing their questioning and their listening skills, being able to persuade and negotiate, and really being sensitive to different personality types, cultural backgrounds, really developing those interpersonal skills. They're working with enterprise application software, so their technical abilities are enhanced. And as you'll see in the simulation that we're all about to, to play, um, ethical uh, awareness, uh, sustainability, that global mindset is really central to the challenges that the teams are set within this and other simulations. Um, and don't take my word for it. As I mentioned, we've plenty of case studies. There's been plenty of research papers written with our collaboration and, and independently, of course. But as we'll see across um, a range of partnerships here at Salford, Liverpool John Moores, Saeed Business School, Royal Melbourne, critical thinking, uh, effective learning tools, average modular scores, pass rates, average marks, all demonstrably, demonstrably uh, improved as a result of working with our uh, particular simulations. Um, and then really, I guess it's really just to sort of sum up um, what those benefits of, of our management simulations are. We will create and work with you to provide a realistic context where your students are managing for six, eight weeks, sometimes longer, a virtual company. They've got to make their strategic decisions and they've got to then deal with the, the market dynamics. Um, the cognitive piece, which we've already discussed, they have to analyze the whole scenario. Evaluative, evaluative judgment comes into it. They need to really make those critical informed choices and then to learn 
from that feedback and to learn from those experiences. Highly engaged. You know, these simulations are really interactive and students are really motivated uh, here to invest their time and effort. And it's student centered. So they've really got that opportunity to explore and to experiment. And finally, um, and I'll pass uh, sh shortly after this uh, to my colleague, Chais. Um, if today's simulation doesn't quite tick all of the boxes for what you may be thinking of for your particular module, we've got a wide, broad portfolio where we can create many, many interesting scenarios and opportunities for you. So on that, I will say thank you and pass over to my colleague, Chais. Thank you so much, uh, Peter, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I still have 12 minutes left to get you up to speed in the workshop of today. So I'll start off by showing my screen and just guide you through the presentation as we normally do online, but also on campus, straight to the students. Um, my name is Gijs, Gijs van Dijun. I am Operations Manager here at Edimundo. I work for Edimundo for around 10 to 15 years. I also used to be in development, of course. I did some testing for this simulation, but I've created simulations myself in the past, as you can see from my uh, geeky glasses. But now I'm more involved in setting up simulations for lecturers, professors to meet those learning out. All right, without further ado, I'll share my screen and just walk you quite briefly through the PowerPoint presentation. And then afterwards, we'll go into breakout rooms in which you will be put into smaller teams, just like students will. And then we'll go into the simulation ourselves and we'll try to mimic that experience. We'll come back to the main room to facilitate uh, in a Q and A setting to look at the ranking list and then dive in one more round of simulation. So you will somewhat have a similar experience as the students have. But of course, there will be different topics that we will uh, tap into. Um, so without further ado, let me share my screen and just walk you through the PowerPoint presentation. Simulation that we have set up for today, it's our international simulation. It is mostly played on a higher level, but it can also facilitate at lower level of students because of its flexibility. Um, I will briefly explain the characteristics, how to log in, how to do analysis, how to set up a business plan, how to implement a business plan, taking tactical and operational decisions. Those will end up in positive results, hopefully, and those results need to be analyzed once more. And of course, this will be a circular motion in which students each round will analyze their new situation which will be unique to all the student teams, and then reassess their strategy and then take tactical decisions again. And this will conclude. I'll shortly explain a bit on how the algorithm works as well. So each team will consist roughly of three to five students. They're managing a global operating smart phone brand, such as Apple, Samsung, Huawei, Opi, Xiaomi. Well, there are a lot of brands nowadays up and coming. And they don't manufacture the smartphones. Most of the smartphones in real life are produced under license, which is also the case in the game. Most often around stand for one year and it's played in one week, but can also be uh, into a, a smaller in, in a week or so. Uh, throughout the simulation, we'll add more markets to the simulation, depending of course on the pace of the module itself and also on the level of the students. And as my colleague already explained, it is highly competitive. So the decisions made by team A will affect the outcome of team B and vice versa. But of course, all teams start exactly the same, but after just one round of calculation, each team will have their own unique results. It is all web-based, so they need to go online, they will find the right game, fill in their username and password, and then they're able to enter. They can enter with multiple devices and also with the same account on different locations. Sometimes we play the simulation with mixed groups also all around the globe, so they can enter the game simultaneously. And once they're in the simulation, they need to make sense of the situation. They'll look into their finances, they'll look into the staff results, and also they'll look into the externals, they'll look at the markets that have made available, and they'll look at the news items and of course the competitors. And once they've conducted all the analysis, they will come up with a strategy or business plan. 
simulation facilitates a SWOT analysis. They can also think about the vision of their brand. They need to select a generic strategy. And of course, they need to decide which of the sustainability goals they wish to aspire to. What is most important to this simulation, but almost any, is the need for them to set targets. They need to aim for something. And this determines their risk profile. So they're more ambitious, their targets are set, the more points they are able to earn, but only if they meet the targets they set themselves. And I think this is a really valuable lesson for students and also some other difficulties. And finally, they can also create a growth strategy of hands on. So they've done their analysis. They set up the business plan. They now create their brand profile. They come up with a cool name for their company. Think about a slogan. They can also create their own logo or they can ask an AI tool to create their logo based on their vision or the values of their brand. And they can add themselves as one of the board members. The one can be the CEO, the CFO, the marketing manager, HR, by identifying themselves in a specific role. Well, they get a very better experience, of course. They can simulate a, a, a managerial role that they can reflect on in the end. And hopefully by doing so, they will take decisions more effectively and perhaps even more efficiently. So they've now set their profile and then they will execute their strategy, taking all different decisions on a range of departments for the countries they wish to enter, the management decisions, HR product. I will not go through all the decisions, but we'll dive into them into the breakout rooms. Just highlight a couple of them so they can go into markets. They have to set selling prices, local marketing decisions, HR, inventory decisions. Well, all based on the results and the data available. What is quite unique in this simulation is that they need to create a competitive advantage to become more successful. So they need to have a clear idea on their target audience, their strategy, and how they wish to become more competitive in the long term. So they need to create that competitive advantage and they can become the most affordable, the most reliable, the most sustainable, the most prestige, uh, pristine, but also perhaps the best employer with the highest educated teams, uh, employees. There are ways for them to get the edge over the other teams. And of course, they also take decisions on marketing. So they think about their search engine optimization, their Google price per click, and of course, ever more, or more important nowadays, their budgets on social media. And if they've taken all their decisions, of course, the simulation provides a lot of information. We'll dive into, into the breakout room so they can look at inventory levels, financials, sustainability scores, their staff results. And of course, they can, again, look at the analysis to see how well their decisions have been uh, received by the markets that they have sold to. And also what the other teams have done simultaneously. So they can look at the positioning matrix. They can also see if they have met the targets they've met them, they've set themselves and how many points those targets have provided them. Finally, well, there is a ranking list. Of course. Uh, not that often the ranking list is being used for assessment. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes if there is uh, there's a lecture hoping to get additional engagement by also uh, using the ranking list as an assessment, but personal, my personal opinion is that it's just a motivator for students to do really well on the ranking list. They get a specific certificate for the winning team, of course, and well, the entire simulation should also provide a safe environment for them to to make mistakes because this is a simulation experience. So making mistakes are really beneficial in learning. You learn the most of your mistakes. Yeah, at least I do. So. I'll, yeah, so this is what we do. We hope to facilitate uh, people taking risks, people analyzing the results of their own decisions and making better decisions the next round. And I also, well, the ranking can be sometimes discouraging, but uh, a lot of times student teams will redeem themselves and not that often teams on the top of the ranking will remain there. So that makes it a fun game for all of the participants. All right. I think I have explained the best part of the simulation, of course, but there's a lot more to explore. And the remaining half an hour 
is for you to go into the simulation yourself with your moderator and the moderator can guide you through the simulation itself and of course can ask all different questions. So you will have a somewhat similar experience as the students will have. And well, at the end of today's workshop, we can see which team ends on top of the leaderboard. Good luck. All right. Thank you, Heist. So yeah, you should all now have your invitation. So if you just hit join and we'll um, join you in the breakout rooms. Thanks. I vote for more time. <laughs> Hi, well, well, well said, Abzi. Uh, hi, welcome back. Um, I hope that was, was helpful and informative. I hope you're all feeling confident that your international strategies are the right one and that you've absolutely got the measure of the competition. Let's let's see. I think, Heist, we're going to uh, release the ranking shortly. It needs a little while to... Oh, you, I think you're on mute. There you go. Sorry, is, uh, yes. is it already run? At the moment, the simulation is calculating uh, a minute or two, depending, of course, on the number of teams in the simulation. Um, and, well, <clears throat> most often, of course, students get at least two hours in the first round, sometimes even lo longer. It's nice that students also sometimes have the ability to go into the simulation on their own and also uh, out of class. Most often we set deadlines Friday at midnight or Sunday at midnight. And it's up to students to make the most of the time available. And next week the results are in and we will present the results to the students. Um, Mathieu, I hope the simulation has calculated. And yes, yes, the results are in. At the moment, uh, Barry phones is on top of the leaderboard with 481 points, uh, followed by Kiwi, Cherry. Well, we can see the list here. Um, my team, Citrus Phones, well, we're in there. We're in for the long term. So um, pretty sure we'll uh, we'll catch up with you guys. The differences are still minimum, minimal. Most of the time, a lot of points are earned in the later stage of the game. Mm. Um, after just one round of calculation, that can also be a trial round because a lot of students sometimes want to have a trial run just to make sure they don't make the largest mistakes in the real simulation. And then we'll revisit the student teams uh, in a Q&A setting. So collectively, we'll go through the results and we'll provide some additional understanding on where to find the feedback tool how to analyze the results, how to analyze the markets, and also, um, yeah, how to make sense of, of, the, of the dynamics. So if we go to analysis, we look at targets, of course. You can see if we have met the target that we have set ourselves. Having to decline sales. Well, unfortunately, my team had to decline more than 13% of sales. So something to look into. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on the second position on Global Market Leader. So beware, people. We are coming for you. <laughs> uh, but my education level of staff have dropped. We haven't taken any decisions to educate our employees. So this is something we need <laughs> to pay more attention on. Sustainability. Well, that's also something that we didn't go for. But, uh, well, this is our KPI. This is what we have. Uh, so we are not doing well on our sustainability. So these mm -hmm. are, so we'll, we'll rethink our targets and that is what students will do as well. We will rethink our ambition level, but perhaps we will rethink the targets altogether. Um, and of course, also the simulation tells us how many points we have earned based on those targets. All right. Um, on each dashboard, um, students will get feedback, of course. Uh, at the moment, financially, we, are, we we don't have any red flags, but there are some issues in inventory management and on appealing to the target audience we set out to appeal to 
based on our competitive strategy. If we click on that, we can see, well, at the moment, the height of our selling price in the UK is still an issue. Uh, our low marketing budget in the Netherlands is an issue. Um, so we have a couple of, we have a bit of feedback <laughs> if we want to improve on selling to the budget market in the market that we are selling to. Also on inventory management, well, at the moment we had to decline more than 15% in the UK. So, well, that is that is of course uh, something to dive into, to look how to improve. So we'll show them the results. We show them the inventory levels. There is a video explaining how to improve, how to analyze the results on inventory and which decisions to, to take to uh, to improve on those. So the UK, this is what the message told us. And if we click on the table, we can see in, week, in which weeks stock outs have occurred. You can easily copy and paste numbers into spreadsheets to do calculations. In that case, the data that the simulation, the simulation provides really becomes, well, information for students that they need to digest in order to make better decisions. All numbers can be copied into spreadsheets for them to do calculations. Uh, for instance, to understand, well, uh, the average demand, but also how many partners we could have sold, if only, if only. Um, on staff results, well, here we can see how many externals were needed. Um, well, perhaps we should have hired more employees. We still see that our education level is dropping, so we still have a lot to improve. Um, and students will, will do the same. Of course. I think uh, all teams can do the same analysis, of course. Sometimes I also log in as the number one team showing them what they have done. And most often teams on the number one position can also still improve. So um, yeah, this is just one round of simulation, a speedy round, of course. Um, we go into the next round in a few moments. If we go to communication simulation schedule, we'll see what the deadline is for the next round of simulation, which is the final round of today. And currently we have set up the, the emerging markets to become available. Uh, historically, those are the BRICS, uh, Russia, India, China, South Africa, while Brazil was already available. These have now been added to the simulation, uh, but these are all flexible. Collectively with the lecture, we can decide which markets student teams will start off with and how many markets will become available uh, in each of those rounds of simulation. And also what will happen. So the scenario we play, and that will become quite often a bigger part of the simulation. And these are uncertainties that they have to factor in. Perhaps they will not change their entire strategy, but they will adjust their, ta their, their tactics. So look at out those news messages, of course, and those become a bigger part of the, the simulation. All right. How are things at the different rooms? Are there any questions raised in one of the breakout rooms that perhaps could benefit uh, others as well? Points raised, perhaps? If I may, uh, it's Pierre speaking here. Hi. Um, thank you, Giz. I hope I'm saying your name properly. Uh, that overview of your team's performance gave, gave everybody an inkling as to how the platform performs once the choices have been made and integrated into uh, the uh, the whole simulation package. Um, there was a section that Peter showed us earlier in relation to latest news. So we are going into stage two in a minute. So uh, as far as the latest news are concerned, it would be interesting to, to throw a couple of curveballs in the fray. And Peter said there's a whole library of those. So I'm sure you'll be able to do that. So let's imagine that the first yeah. is related to possible supply chain disruptions that we see play, conflict in places like, let's say, the Congo. Uh, yeah, make, make accessibility to raw material an issue for your suppliers to see how that would disrupt the sales. 
or the accessibility of uh, the phones that we buy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the, the other one could be when you look at regulation in general. Yeah. If if um the amount of screen exposure for teenagers or school children is reduced in the EU all of a sudden, what does that do for the sales of mobile phones? Does it make it less popular to families or something like that? Just to see how that plays in the overall picture. Uh, no, I totally understand. Uh, but we, and that's something we have, uh, we had, um, we were hoping to show you at the end after the final round of simulation. But while we are coming to it, I'll show you the background of the simulation to show you how we can set up the simulation collectively and also the different events, the different news items you as a lecturer are able to pick. And these are the 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 the, the curveballs we can throw at the different uh, student teams, and those can be selected in each of the rounds of simulation. So depending, of course, on the markets available, we'll advise which scenario options we would suggest to include, also based on student level. If it's more about logistics than if that's a specific topic of a certain week or for the simulation in general, then perhaps uh, the uh, suppliers with a bad reputation will get an extra delay in delivery. Um, there are other supply issues uh, that we can select. So each of those events will show news items, it will show students, well, this can be the risks, and after calculation of the round, they can see the results, and there's another news item telling them what the impact will be in the future. But this is what we can trigger, of course, depending on the markets available. For instance, a data breach in the Cayman Islands, well, I would, uh, this is an event we can only trigger if the Cayman Islands are also part of the scenario, of course. Russian aggression, well, again, Russia needs to be available. And if you want to, uh, if you're still doing business, then well, that have an impact, of course, in other European markets. So uh, sustainability, corruption, well, all depending on which theme or which topic you as a lecturer want to focus on in a specific round. So this is what we can facilitate and custom made uh, within the simulation. That is brilliant. Thank you. No, excellent. It's excellent. So um, we'll add a few news items uh, before we go into the final round of simulation, just to show you what news items you can expect, where they are listed, uh, and to analyze the risk collectively before uh, we calculate the second round of simulation. Again, we only have half an hour but we can use that time to look into the different aspects of the simulation we didn't find time to go into in the first round. But great, thank you so much for your question and, um, and, and for your participation. Excellent. Um, all right. Are we still enjoying ourselves? Uh, are we ready to go into the second and final round of simulation? Um, then I'll see my colleagues in the in group four in a short while in the breakout room. Um, well, see you all in half an hour. Thanks, guys. <clears throat>
heist. Do you want to uh, put put us out of our, our misery? This is always for me. This is always the uh, one of the main takeaways from, from these sessions. It doesn't matter if it's with really young students. We've you know we work with groups of students as as young as eight, uh, all the way through to those of us with, with a little more grey hair than we care to admit. There's always this absolute eager anticipation of did we get it right? Have we moved up the table? Was our strategy winning? Have we have we really understood what you know what's at play here? So everybody's hanging on Heist's word. There will be a steward inquiry if Team Cherry is not the winner. But yeah. wait, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna get my 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 face for you know when the awards are, are given out and you don't win. <laughs> How you do those? The real shock. Yeah. All right. Well, most often we are invited indeed to do somewhat of a winner ceremony. So after the introduction, a Q&A, uh, universities ask us, well, can you just uh, provide uh, a winner ceremony as well? Mm -hmm. uh, so we can show them the final ranking list as well as provide them some guidance on what has happened during the scenario and what and why the team that is on top of the leaderboard has won the game and perhaps uh, not a team on the bottom. Um, and of course, also to tell them that the help desk is still available, the simulation will remain available and all personal data will be deleted after a certain time. All our servers are in Europe, they are in Ireland. We work with uh, Microsoft. Uh, so we have to tell them that, of course, their personal information is safe and they can still access the game. So without further ado, let me share my screen for the final time and tell you that indeed Cherry Pones is still on top of the leaderboard, <laughs> followed by Kiwis, but quite a few strong uh, th teams have risen. And the differences between the teams is still somewhat of okay. As you have probably seen, if you have looked into the news items that you were able to pick a long-term goal, that long-term goal can provide you up till three and a half thousand points. So all teams are still able to, to, to top the, the leaderboard. Um, you can see the, also the progress in comparison to last round of simulation, of course. And this is just after just two rounds of simulation. And most likely in university, this will continue for several rounds on end. We advise to have at least six rounds of simulation in this specific game. Um, mm -hmm. Other games can run uh, a bit uh, uh, can run a few less rounds in order to make it uh, a playable and complete story. Uh, with this game, teams are most often invested also in the long-term success of, of, uh, of the company. So in order to let them give us uh, a, a fair chance, uh, six rounds is about the minimum, I would say. So congratulations to Cherry Phones. Um, 1200 points, nothing to sneeze at. So if we look into ch cherry phones, let's see what they have been doing. And well, they also get feedback, of course. There's always room for improvement. So if we click on them, well, financially they're doing okay, but they're still yeah. uh, not that affordable. Those customers are still complaining that, well, they would like to see you drop your prices. And there's still an issue in Belgium. So you're still not uh, able to supply or to fulfill all the demand there. But financially, you're doing okay. Um, if we go to the analysis and, of course, go to the targets, we can see if they have hit their targets, of course. Well, profits are decreasing, but at least they're profitable and they have hit their targets. Uh, well, unfortunately, they did have to decline more sales than their ambition level was set for. Global market leader, well, it's interdependence. And, well, there are other teams, perhaps the team I was doing so, but they, they have outperformed you. So you're not hitting the third position that you were aspiring to. Education level, yes, well, you've invested heavily and indeed in the final round, you have met that specific target. But 
most dominantly for earning a lot of points is hitting your KPI. It is focusing your attention on what is most important. And for you, it has been your sustainability. So you have hit that target. Congratulations for now. Of course, maintaining that score will also provide you perhaps some issues down the line if you want to be more compatible on price later on. Um, but yes, mm -hmm. congratulations. You have hit your KPI. And I think that is great. And that's the biggest contributor to your ranking position. Well, thank, thank you, Stefania, Alavi, and, and Pierre. It was, a, it was a great team. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good session. And one of the things that we, to, do, to your longer term objectives, Heis, one of the things that we opted not to do was to invest heavily at all in, in research and development, because, you know, we, we understood that there would be a, a delay in seeing the results of that quite heavy investment. And so with a cost efficiency uh, strategy, we decided to jet jettison that for the purpose of a two-year exercise. Yeah, the scope of the simulation is often uh, determining uh, which investments uh, are are are, uh, health, uh, are well thought choice. Uh, that's true. Great. So, um, any uh, anybody would like to to throw out any sort of last minute questions or requests or or thoughts generally on on today's sessions and uh, experiences uh, within your within your different groups? I I actually just wanted to. Uh, point out and you know, just really quick. Uh, even if you know there are a lot of prof uh, professors here, where may maybe uh, the simulation is the or the course that you're teaching uh, is not sustainability or international business or global business or or something like that. Uh, so maybe it could be marketing, it could be operations management, it could be uh, entrepreneurship. So if you uh, you know if you do uh, have any specific courses, just please do put us put, put them in the chat box or uh, reach out to Peter or Gaius or uh, you know, any one of us, uh, Paul Levy, uh, and uh, we'll be sure to you know, organize a short demo session with that particular simulation in mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great point. Um, it's 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 really important that the the simulation that we we can put in front of you is very closely aligned with with the subject matter and the and the particular focus of your teaching style. So yeah, absolutely. As, as we mentioned earlier, quite quite a good working level of flexibility. Um, and customization. Um, I've just got one one eye on on the clock. We've only got a couple of minutes left. And, and, and while all of the, sorry, was that somebody that wanted to? Oh, I was, I was, it's Paul Hinchcliffe. I was only just going to say I I use your simulations with foundation year students at the start of a course, and 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 really the it was getting them to the idea of using simulations. And at the end of the simulation, they had to do a presentation to sell the business to me. Oh. And, and, and the presentation was what got them the marks, not doing the simulation. So if they made mistakes, they could sort of overcome it by doing a really good presentation. But it was the, I used the simulation as the means to the end. And it was, it was you know, the first time they were new at university and it was getting them all to work in a group and to have fun. And to you know, you know, learn as about as many different business constructs as possible over that first semester. And yeah, so if anybody else is in that position, thoroughly recommend you guys for for the simulations. It's uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's not just about coming first, but a group that came very low down could do a fantastic pr presentation and come first. And they really enjoyed doing the presentations. Yeah, they really, yeah. really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, because it brings it all together, and then there, yeah. there's at least as much. Having run a couple of businesses on my own, there, there's there's at least as much learning in when you don't get it right as to when you when you allegedly do. Not not yeah. that I want to detract from our yeah. massive victory. Yeah. This afternoon, and, but, and, uh, yeah, it's a good we point. didn't yeah. used to say, it, but the students often dressed up and wore a suit to do the presentation. Yeah, they really got into it. It was it, it was yeah, yeah it's great. Fantastic. Uh, 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 Dr. Nuvai, sir, I, th I think you had your, your hand up. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to, to hop on and just um, talk us through any point you wanted to raise. Maybe, may, maybe we, we we missed the moment. Okay. Um, well, look, we're, we're we're in that final minute. Um, thank you uh, uh, again, everybody. It's been uh, particularly Paul. Those those very helpful comments. That's a really nice way to sort of bring it all right to 
square the circle, so to speak. Um, and while all the gameplay and the group work in today has been really fantastic, July the 11th, we've actually got a fascinating uh, webinar with a couple of clients we've been working with for over 10 years who have been talking about uh, an emergency framework that they devised through COVID and have taken it out of the classroom and then back into the classroom. And so while we're all very happy to tell you how wonderful it is, that's going to be a great session for a couple of reasons. Not least of all, there's quite a large element of student feedback and student outcomes within that webinar um, that you can dive into and discuss with our colleagues from Liverpool John Moores University. So three o'clock on the dot. Um, thank you very much again, everybody. It's been a real pleasure. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully on our, our next webinar. Bye for now.